What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 Regulation D video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about what I believe are the top 10 Pokemon in Regulation D as far as just, not, not like how splashable they are, but just how generally good they are. Like Pokemon that like if you think, oh yeah, I have a spot for this on my team, you're probably gonna to wanna to go for it. That being said, you know, obviously it depends on your team. You're not gonna slap an Urshifu on a team with a million other fighting types unless you're playing mono fighting, in which case I have fun in the 1200s. But yeah, so this is gonna be based off of just my experience laddering so far. I've only played in one round of one tournament, which funny story, I just forgot when round two was up, so I didn't play in the whole tournament and I ended up dropping. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I forgot to enter round two, but um, beyond that laddering, um, I've hit like 1670 the other day on ladder, which I believe is top 50, um, or at least it was top 50 last time I checked. Let me see. I have it up now. 1690 is top 50 now, but yeah, no, I played a decent amount on ladder. It was really fun, um, and I think this is actually a really solid format, so I'm going to be going through my opinions on the top 10 Pokemon. If you guys enjoyed at any point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video. Subscribe, yeah, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content. Uh, and answer my comment question of the day, which is what Pokemon do you think I am underrating here? What Pokemon do you think should be top 10, but isn't? I'm going to get one out of the way. Ursa Luna, I actually, I think it dropped out of the top 10. So it's not going to be on this list. However, I do think it is really good and people are just straight up using it wrong right now. And I'm going to make a video about that um, in a couple of days here. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. So I don't think that this is going to be in any particular order. However, I will leave the top three probably until the end. So I'm going to keep in mind 10 through 10 through uh, four, not in any order. Top three, you can put them in whatever order you want. Uh, but for number 10, uh, we're actually going to go with Dragonite. Now, I know what you're saying. Why would you put Dragonite here? Dragonite isn't actually that good of a Pokemon, right? Well, actually, it won like the last Beanie Brawl. Uh, it's placed pretty well in on a couple of teams in here. And I think a lot of people are really underrating Dragonite at the beginning of the format because they're looking at these new tools. They're looking at stuff like Enamorous. They're looking at stuff like Hisui and Gudra. That, like now we have Cresselia, which will sometimes run Ice Beam. And there's just like a lot of new tools in the game that people would, you know, rightfully be scared of when it comes to using a Pokemon that was good in regulation A through C. Um, and yeah, I mean, th those are pretty valid points, but Dragonite, it's just good. You almost always see it paired with Chen Pao. We see Chen Pao Dragonite here in first. Uh, we see it again in third, again in... Where's that other Dragonite? I lost track of him. Again in like 12th, and I'm sure I've passed over one over here. Uh, but yeah, the reason Dragonite is still very solid is because it has the bulk it needs to survive everything, and it is one of the single greatest uh, Terra Pokemon in the game. Terra Normal is phenomenal. Terra Flying is phenomenal. But with that uh, Chen Pao next to it and Inner Focus, you already know, old reliable, Voice Band Extreme Speed is really good. And this is a thing that I definitely underrated the, at the beginning of the game. I thought Choice Band Extreme Speed is way too cheesy to be good. There's no way it's going to be the best set. And while I do think that right now it was the best, it's the best set and now it's not always going to be the best set. Um, I think that it is actually pretty reliable. Being able to throw this move off uh, reliably, granted there's no terrain on the field, which by the way, your best partner not only lowers the defenses of everything, but also can remove terrain with Ice Spinner. Uh, yeah, it, it's it's going to be able to hit everything very, very easily. And Dragonite, of course, does have access to other tools. I've seen them actually run Aerial Ace as a decent flying stab. Um, Outrage is actually, and by the way, it's not actually a good flying stab. It's just that when you're running Choice Band, you can run Aerial Ace. That's the point here. Um, but yeah, uh, if you're running Terra Normal, then run Aerial Ace in your band set. Uh, that's going to allow you to hit things like um, Opposing Amoongus, just Opposing Rillaboom for really strong damage. Outrage, while you can't choose your opponent, uh, you're actually going to hit everything for 120 base power off of this insane attack set with everything's defense dropped. Uh, and the final move that I actually see get ran a lot is going to be like Stomping Tantrum, uh, which is just very solid in the Steel types, which is otherwise um, sort of wall off this set. But Low Kick is another option. So yeah, Dragonite um, is going to be my uh, number 10. We're already talking about Chen Pao. Chen Pao is also in my top 10. Once again, it's not number 9. Like number 10 through 4 are going to be in whatever order. And I know I'm going to get comments about it, but yeah. Chen Pao is good for the reasons I stated before. And I feel like a lot of these Pokemon do well with partners. So I, we're going to go ahead and... No, I'm not going to spoil it yet. But uh, Chen Pao... Um, actually pairs well with a ton of really good Pokemon in this format. There's a lot of really solid physical attackers that we got access to, Dragonite being one of them, the Urshifu's being another. Um, 
But yeah, I'm trying not to throw things on the list without spoiling them. So I'm going to go here for examples. But yeah, you know, we see the Urshifu, it's able to drop everything as like physical defense stat. Um, but also it just still has access to very solid tools that it would have before Ice Spinner to remove terrain. Uh, Sucker Punch is still probably its best dark stab because it's going to be able to um, just hit things with priority. However, I have seen some throat chop sets pop up here and there because it's going to allow to hit Cresselia for super effective damage. And really just lowering the defense stat of like these really strong uh, physical walls is going to be what allows it to maintain this niche. Being able to give everything on the field basically an effective life orb uh, is just very solid. And of course, it does have access to other tools like Haze for beating the non-existent right now Don Dozo. But, you know, there are a few things that are certain in life and Don Dozo being viable is pretty much always one of them. I feel like it's going to come back. Um, and of course, Taunt. It's a phenomenal Taunt user. Yeah, Chen Pao doesn't need too much explanation. It's going to be my number nine. Uh, moving on, I am going to go with Amoongus because if I put it higher on the list, I think people are going to roast me. It's not really, it, like I said, it's in no order right now. But Amoongus remains one of the best Pokemon in the game. It's actually one of the best Rocky Helmet users, uh, comboing it with Regenerator. It also has access to its, you know, tried and true moveset of Spore, Rage Powder, Pollen Puff, and Protect. What this is going to do is allow you to beat a lot of these physical attackers by running a more um this is a good defensive set you know just something like that whatever um and you're gonna be able to rage powder away those hits into the amoongus dealing some rocky helmet damage you're gonna be able to spore things like pokemon going for trick room pokemon under trick room because you're slower than a lot of very common uh, trick room sweepers uh you're actually slower than glacier in fact which um well not you're not slower you're speed tying with glacier but uh yeah it, you're gonna threaten a ko or a, a sleep on glacier and it is a really good benefit uh, benefiter of uh terra Terra Water is one of the best Terras for this guy because it's going to allow it to resist those fire moves um, as well as just have a very solid defensive typing. As good as like Poison and Grass is for defensive typing, being weak to Ice isn't great in the face of like Chen Pao Dragonite. So becoming Terra Water and just completely annihilating Chen Pao is really good. And of course, the biggest draw is the fact that this thing can beat non-Terra Water Urshifu by going for Rage Powder and making them take that Rocky Helmet. If they hit a single Surging Strikes into you, they are losing half of their health because they hit you three times and they lose a sixth of their health every single time. It is very funny. Amoongus is one of the best Pokemon in the game. Redirection, sleep, uh, you know, healing your partner. It's amazing. Shout out Amoongus. Shout out Amoongus gang. Um, here at my number seven spot, I gotta stop saying the number of these out loud. Wait, 10, 8, 9, yeah. Or 10, 9, 8. I, I got my numbers wrong. <laughs> That's how you know I'm smart. I'm mixing up my numbers. Um... At my number seven spot, I feel like I can reveal... Eh, we'll go Rillaboom here. We'll go Rillaboom here. Rillaboom is another phenomenal grass type. Um, it fits well on a ton of teams. It's one of the faster fake out users, but also it is sort of the reason Fluttermane is kind of falling off. If we look at like usage stats, Fluttermane is still very good. It won this tournament. Um, it's at like, it, we got fourth, it got sixth. Uh, we see it again in seventh and eighth. Um, but when I say fall off, I mean like before, Fluttermain usage was at like nearly 90, 80 something percent. It was really, really high, right? Um, but the existence of Rillaboom being able to soak up hits with that uh, Assault Vest and like really decent bulk, uh, the access to like U-Turn, Drum Beating, Wood Hammer, just the ability to one-shot it and eat its hits pretty reliably. Uh, makes Fluttermane sort of fall off a little bit. And of course, Rillaboom is a phenomenal uh, check to Pokemon like Urshifu. It's going to be able to have fake outs for Pokemon like Chen Pao. And it's just does solid into a lot of things. Uh, while Ursaluna, I don't actually believe is the biggest threat in the metagame right now. Um, it is solid into Ursaluna. It does have access to some coverage moves that allow it to beat things that would otherwise beat it. I think Terra Water is another great, uh, it's another great user of Terra Water. But um it did lose access. It did lose access to high horsepower, but Stomping Tantrum still exists. I don't know why it got high horsepower. Why did they give this thing high horsepower? Like it, it's a monkey. It, it it stomps and it has a tantrum, but it you know, high horsepower. It's not a horse. Anyways, yeah, it's just a phenomenal Pokemon. It also has access to a lot of really nice tools. Of course, that drum beating speed control, that fake out, that U turn. But it is one of the rare knockoff users in this uh, meta game, which is going to allow it to remove items like leftovers, um, citrus berries like annoying things that you just don't want to deal with. And of course, it does still have access to Taunt, the best move in the game. Um, probably, actually. I think, you know, Protect and Taunt are pretty up there. So yeah, that's going to be my number seven. 
Uh, my number six, we're gonna go ahead and throw Heatran here. Heatran is just incredible. Why is this doing a thing? Heatran is just incredible. Um, it is a steel and fire type. And another reason that we actually don't see as much Fluttermane as we used to, but it's also a solid check into Golden Go, which is why Golden Go usage has dropped a little bit. You still see it, it's still phenomenal Pokemon, but it sort of keeps it in check. I really like these national decks formats, quote unquote national decks, because you know, we don't have that anymore. Um, but it introduces a lot of like tools to keep the power creep in check. I feel like the regional decks formats, as fun as they are, uh, as creative as they can get, when you add back in these tools, you sort of see the cream of the crop rise to the top. Um, and it's just like, it's really nice. So yeah, uh, Heatran does have access to, uh, you know, a phenomenal bulk in 91, 106, 106. It has pretty decent speed at 77, allowing it to operate under Tailwind or Trick Room. It's very flexible in that way. And has a really good special attack set at 130. For the most part, you know, you see these things run Heat Wave, Protect, Flash Cannon, and their last move is pretty up in the air. Some run Earth Power to beat opposing Heatran, some run Taunt because it does get that phenomenal move, and some run Substitute with like Leftovers, because when you pair that with Rillaboom, not only do you get like double recovery after going for a sub, but also it's going to allow you to reduce the damage this thing would take from moves uh, like Earthquake and Magnitude and Big misconception, people think that Grassy Surge, oh my, I didn't mention Grassy Surge on Rillaboom. Yeah, that's the best part about it. I feel like it was implied. Um, yeah, so the reason that like, uh, uh, Grassy Surge is good, but a lot of people believe that like it reduces the power of all ground moves. It doesn't, no, it's only like Earthquake and, um, and Magnitude for some reason. And I think Bulldoze, but I might be wrong about that one. Uh, but for the most part, the only one that matters is Earthquake. So being able to reduce damage from Earthquake is really big because a lot of Pokemon do run Earthquake. Uh, so Heatran just benefits from that a ton. And the combination of Flash Fire plus Terra Grass means that not only are you able to uh, resist your formerly weakness to water and remove your um, fighting weakness, but also you're immune to fire moves as a grass type, making it a much more solid defensive typing, making you immune to, you know, Amoongus Rage Powders and Spores and just allowing Heatran to operate unimpeded by a ton of things. It also makes it beat Urshifu a lot of the time. So that's very, very good for it. Um, Heatran is just a great Pokemon that operates well on a ton of teams. For my, what am I at? One, two, three, four, five. Um, am I already at like number five? Yeah, I guess I am already at number five. For my number five slot, um, I actually have a tie. It's sort of, it's between the two of these. I actually put Thunderous and Tornadus as a tie. Um, and I just realized that this is not a Pokemon box. I thought it was a Pokemon box. Let me fix that really quick. Um, here. Oop. Regulation D, import from text. There we go. So Tornadus and Thunderous sort of operate very similarly and it's, it's a choose your own adventure, right? In one corner, you have Rain Dance, Thunder Wave Speed Control, and uh, that move that doesn't, or wait, hold on, Rain Dance, Thunder Wave Speed Control, Taunt, and that move that doesn't miss in Rain, right? Like, th that's that's one option. In the other corner, you have Rain Dance, Tailwind Speed Control, Taunt, and that move that doesn't miss in Rain. And both of them are also speed control tools because they lower speed, but Wild Bolt Storm has a greater reward in my opinion. Um, yeah, it's it's a choose your own adventure in my opinion, uh, but they both fit well under rain teams. Manual Rain is a phenomenal archetype right now when you pair this thing with like Urshifu or Basket Legion. I'm a big Basket Legion believer, by the way, but he's not on this list. And these Pokemon did get access to Covert Cloak, so that is very good. But yeah, Prankster with all of these tools is incredible. They have great special attack stats. And while their bulk isn't the best at 79, 70, 80, because of the fact that these guys have naturally high speed and special attack stats, you can actually just build them to be fat. I've seen like bold natured uh, Thunderous running around where like they hit like a, a certain speed tier. Like, oh, now I'm able to, you know, uh, outspeed this and that under like Tailwind or after like a Thunder Wave. And then they put the rest into like their bulk, right? They'll, they'll go like, oh, four special attack, four special defense. And then now it's like, oh, hey, also I beat Urshifu um, because I'm fat and I hit it with a super effective move. Both of these guys do the exact same thing. They're great rain tools. Thunderous fits on more stuff than just rain and Tornadus can sometimes be paired with like, you know, sunny day and stuff. It's sort of like a better Murkrow. But yeah, these Pokemon are tied for number five. So we'll call them number five and number four. And now we've entered 
our top three. What is our top three? Well, um, I'm actually going to go ahead and throw Landorus in my top three. Now, you can choose your form, but I'm still a big Landorus Therian believer. I think that Landorus Therian is pretty undervalued at the moment, but I do still throw it in the top three because of the different movesets it can run. So if we like take a look at these two Landorus, um, let's look at Danielle who got, or no, let's look at, yeah, this is Danielle. Danielle who got 15th place uh, and throw that one open. We can see that this is a Assault Vest Landorus T with Stomping Tantrum, Terra Blast, Rock Slide, and U-Turn. Terra Flying, it's a bit more of an offensive uh, moveset. Or if we scroll up here and look at this other Landorus, uh, we're going to go ahead and see that this is a Rocky Helmet Landorus with Terra Blast, U-Turn, Stomping Tantrum, and Protect. And it might be cheating to say that we can put both Landorus up here, but I'm, you know, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to cheat on this one. I think both Landorus are actually very good. Cheer Force Landorus Eye is very scary. If we look at the other Landorus, what do we see? The Landorus Eye that got third place. This Landorus is running the standard Life Orb, Sheer Force Set, Earth Power, Sludge Bomb, Rock Slide, and Terra Ground. Now you might be saying, but Marco's boosted. Why would you run Earth Power over Sansir Storm? And that is a good question. Um, Sansir Storm, as powerful of a move as it is, the 100 base power because of the spread is actually weaker than Earth Power by quite a bit. So would you rather hit both opponents with a slightly weaker Sheer Force Life Orb Earth Power um, with a no chance to burn and you have a, you know, a chance to miss because it's only 80, or would you rather just pick up reliable KOs with your Landris? Also, you know, while you can't flinch with Rock Slide uh, or Poison with Sludge Bomb, Rock Slide and Sludge Bomb are still phenomenal coverage moves because Rock in ground is very difficult to switch into. Oh, you know, I have a Steel type, let me switch into my Flying type. Oh, well, I got hit with a Rock Slide. It also has a really high attack stat. So if you were to run like a hasty nature, right, you decrease like your defense stat um, to allow for you to like hit things a little bit harder. What it's going to let you do is like you can just run like four and you can just run like four attack and like 252 special attack. And at that point, like your attack set isn't bad. If you were to run like timid, like a lot of them are, then yeah, your attack set's kind of bad 131. Uh, but with that hasty nature, if you accept the fact that you're going to get like one shot by a lot of things, yeah, like you're going to be able to hit things pretty hard. And at that, like this Landorus is going to be able to put up enough pressure where I've been able to run like Substitute, Protect, Earth Power, um, and Sludge Bomb is like my main moveset. And it's just like very easy to get away with. Uh, also, Terra Grass is just one of the best Terras for it. It puts on a lot of pressure. I think that both Landorus are extremely undervalued right now, but I don't think that they're number one in the format. My top two are kind of tied. Uh, and... I think one of them is a little bit of a hot take going off of like tournament results, but this thing has been a menace on the ladder. So my number two is going to be Cresselia. Cresselia received a massive buff. Not only does it still have access to like Trick Room, not only is it one of the few Pokemon in the game with Ally Switch, but it has the move Lunar Blessing, which Lunar Blessing is Jungle Healing. Now, if you don't know what Jungle Healing is, Jungle Healing was a move that Zerud got um, in Generation 8 that would heal you and your opponent for a quarter of your health. So it's like a little mini recover, but it, you know, it shares the, it shares the, um, the health around, but it also heals your partner of status. So Lunar Blessing can wake up a partner. It can remove poison. It can remove burn. It can just heal things up and be really annoying. I've run like Lunar Blessing Cresselia with Wochan on stall and it's very funny. It is an extremely funny Pokemon to run. And of course it does still have access to like Helping Hand. So I've seen like a moveset like this run around where they drop like Ally Switch for Dazzling Gleam. Oh, also Terra Fairy is a phenomenal Terra type for um, Cresselia because it allows it to run Terra, it allows it to run like a pretty decently damaging Dazzling Gleam or Moonblast while also allowing it to resist a lot of the things that it would be weak to before as a psychic type, specifically dark, which is like a really annoying thing for psychic types to deal with, um, but also like bug if you end up facing the rare Slytherin player. So yeah, Cresselia is gonna be able to eat all those hits. It's gonna be able to recover for its opponent, and it's gonna be able to just be one of the greatest support Pokemon in the game. It pairs well with Heatran, it pairs well with Rillaboom, it pairs well with Amoongus, it pairs well with basically everything on this list, except for slight anti-synergy with Chen Pao, but you could even make a case for just not having them in at the same time if you need Cresselia to live a physical attack. So yeah, Cresselia, even though it had that base stat uh, total drop from like 120, 130 to 110, 120, it didn't matter when it gave it when they gave it this move. My number one, I made a video about it the other day. It's Urshifu Water. Urshifu Water is the single best Pokemon in the game right now. Being able to bypass Protect with 
surging strikes, being able to run a variety of items, Mystic Water being one of the best right now with like Terra Water and like a Rain Dance uh, Genie next to it. Uh, to just blow up everything is really solid but you know choice scarf is also just been like a really good set for it too choice scarf surging strikes is going to be able to outspeed opposing flutter main uh it's even it's even able to outspeed a couple of pokemon under tailwind not a lot of them though um but like you know it's it's gonna allow you to just be like a nuisance versus a lot of things uh it forces terras pretty consistently if you see a heatran in the field and you have an urshavu rapid strike and you're gonna surging strikes into it, like 99% of the time, they're gonna be like, yeah, it's time to pop that Terra Grass. So being able to force out those tools early just makes Urshifu Rapid Strike such a menace. And while Terra does make dealing with the Urshifus a lot easier this gen, I still think Unseen Fist is just a broken ability in doubles. Look, they should have made it do redu reduce damage through Protect. Doing full damage through Protect is just obnoxious. There are only a few ways to deal with it, and those are Friend Guard, Burn, Wo Chen, and like Sun specifically for Urshifu Rapid Strike. Uh, and yeah, and the reason, you know, it's busted is because Fritz, like, you know, Gujra runs Shell Armor specifically to not lose to like Urshifu Single Strike. It is it is a very annoying Pokemon uh, because you're critting all the time. So that means Intimidate doesn't matter. It means that Reflect doesn't matter. I did a whole video about this guy the other day. So just check that one out if you want like a deep dive. But yeah. Uh, these are my top 10. I feel like there's a little bit of a hot take there at the end with Landris, but I, I, I believe it. You know what? I, I might even switch it around. You want to know something? Here's what I'm going to do just to make people like not mad. Um, I'm going to move Landris up here. And we're going to say the only reason Landris is up there is because Tornadus and Thunderous are tied and I couldn't make it a top three. I'm not going to like this. <laughs> okay. If I'm being honest, Landris is like right here. And Tornadus and Thunderous are like both number three if I could do that but that doesn't work out mathematically so yeah that's gonna be today's video uh those are my thoughts on the top 10 Pokemon in the metagame right now let me do you guys think in the comment section down below was I wrong was I right do you think you're gonna unsubscribe because I did not say that Overquill is busted um but if you do want to check out a busted Overquill video I also did a video with the Poke Sports guy uh Poke Sports guy number one uh still just Mike and of course the main event yesterday on the channel um so yeah check that out and yeah, if you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.